Here we are, back for lesson 50. Wow, we're getting there, aren't we? Here's our verse, Proverbs 28, 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons, <laughs> you get poverty enough. Now, I've talked to you about this. Compounding interest is a very powerful multiplying factor over time. So, there's a lot of calculations involved. Is there an easy way to figure out compound interest? Yeah. There's an approximation that you can use. It, don't, don't use this on your assignments when you need to get to the nearest dollar, but just in general, there is the rule of 72. Divide 72 by the interest rate. So what we're saying is, you know, uh, okay, I'm going to get 1% interest at the bank. Okay, you take 72, divide it by one, you get 72. Okay, what does that mean? The result is the number of years it will take for your money to double. So in other words, if you put $1,000 in the bank, at 1% interest, after 72 years, it's 2,000. But by the rule of 72, if you have 2% interest, 72 divided by two is 36, so it's only 36 years to double, and so forth. So there we go, 1%, 72 years. 2%, half of that, 36 years. If you get 4%, that's 18 years, 6%, 12 years, 8%, 9 years, and then there's some fractions involved in some. 12, 12 times 6 is 72, so that's exact. So those are some percentages and amount of time to take to double your investment. Okay, so what? So it doubles in so many years. How does that help me figure things out? Okay, let's take a scenario. Pretend that you're 26. You invest $10,000 at 6%. By the way, this is all compounded interest. Okay, not simple, but compounded interest. Okay, you invest $10,000 at 6% interest at age 26. How much will you have at 62, the old retirement. Now, what you have to do is 26 to 62, subtract, that's 36 years. So that's the point in all these examples that we're looking at. So in 36 years, how many doubling periods do I have? How many times does it double? Okay, well, it's 6% interest. 6% interest, remember, 72 divided by 6 is 12 years. So that means we're doubling three times. 36 divided by 12, three doubling periods. Okay, what are we starting with? $10,000. So if you double it three times, you do this, you go, okay, double it once, that's 20,000, 40,000, 80,000. Three doublings, double the double the double. It's not plus 10 plus, no, it's 10,000, double it to 20. Don't add another 10, double the 20 to 40, double the 40 to $80,000. Now, what if instead of 6% interest, what if you're getting 8% interest? Okay, when you take 72, rule of 72, you divide it by 8, you get every 9 years. Now, we had 36 years between. So that means we went from 3, now we have 4 doubling periods. So remember, 3, when it was 6%, there were 3 doubling periods, that got us to 80 thousand. So there's going to be another doubling period. It's going to go from 80 to 160. Now, what if we go to 10% interest? Okay, rule of 72, 
divide it by 10, you get a little over seven years. And in 36 years, seven times five is 35. And that fraction is going to be just about five doubling periods. So we just did three was 80. Then we add another double and we get to 160. So now we're at $320,000. So notice the time is the same. All we're doing is increasing the interest. All right, let's go to 12% interest. So rule of 72, 72 divided by 12 is six years. Every six years, your money doubles. We've got 36 years, yeah, six doubling periods. Five was 320,000, so yeah, the next one, six, $640,000. That's from a 10, thousand dollar investment made in your mid-20s and now you're looking at over a half million dollars at retirement. That's the power of compound interest. Remember that quote? It's a matter of time, not timing, that's important. I want to emphasize that by this example. Okay, we're going to look at two people. Our first one is Speedy Sam. Now, what Speedy Sam does is he invests $5,000 when he is 20 years old. That's huge. $5,000. Well, that's like $15 a day. Now, do you go out and get a coffee in the morning at certain places that are four and five dollars? Do you eat out at fast food that's seven, eight, nine dollars for a meal? That's what we're talking about. Now, it is the equivalent of a car payment. I understand that. But $5,000 a year. So Speedy Sam does that when he's 20. He does that when he's 21. Another 5,000 is invested. When he's 22. And when he's 23. So how much does he have invested principal so far? $20,000. Now look what Speedy Sam does. He says, that's it. I made my investment. Here we go. I move this up here. Nothing. He's not putting anything away. What's he doing? What's his problem? Okay, now, when he hits 62, how much money do you think he's going to have? Here's the answer. One million three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now I did not write. I I think I figured at ten percent interest, compounded, if I remember right. A million and a third dollars from twenty thousand. Why? He got in the market early. With five thousand. You know what? Imagine that you invest your money instead of spending it. I wish I could go back and talk to Bill back when he graduated from college and started earning money and tell him this because he didn't know it. So we didn't do that. And he doesn't have the million dollars sitting in the bank because he invested right. So that's Speedy Sam. Now, in contrast, let's look at late Louise. You see, she got out of college and I know it's 20, pretend, and she's spending and spending and spending and she's not saving. She didn't know about it. But finally, 
when she hits 30, she goes, hey, wait a minute. I really ought to be saving. So I'm going to start saving. And she's putting that same 5000 that Speedy Sam put in. Okay. So at 30, she starts putting it away. Notice, boy, I mean, she's really socking that money away. Look at that. $5,000 every single year. All the way through. So, what's she going to have after going from 30 to 62? 32 years of 5000 She's put $160,000 in. I mean, Speedy Sam, he only put 20000 in. How much is she going to have? You ready? She doesn't have as much as Speedy Sam. She's got a million, two. He's got a million and a third. He only put 20000 in. What's the difference? He got that extra compounding doubling period because he finished his investment at 23, he has seven years where it doubles. He doesn't need to keep investing. Now, that's still a good idea to keep investing, but I'm just showing you the power of compound interest and time and investment. If you do it correctly, now, where do you get these kind of investment rates? We're not there. We will talk about that. So, how much should you invest now? A 12% interest in order to have $2 million at retirement. Well, let's assume that your age is 17 and we're saying 65. So 65 minus 17 is 48 years. So there's a 48 year investment period. 72, rule of 72, divide by 12% interest. Every six years, it doubles. So 48 years, yeah, I made it nice and easy. 48 divided by six, you have eight doubling periods. Now, you could say, well, if I take 5,000 and get up to 8 and 6,000 and 7,000, but let's go backwards. We want to have $2 million after eight doubling periods. So let's cut $2 million in half eight times. So when you cut it in half the first time, you got a million. The second time, you have a half million. The third time you have a quarter million, an eighth million, a sixteenth, a thirty-second, one sixty-fourth, one one hundred and twenty-eighth of a million. So you take that, you figure that out, that comes out to be uh, fifteen thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars. So $15,000, okay? You invest $15,000 at age 17 at 12%, you will have $2 million at retirement. I've read some books. Anybody can be a millionaire. It does not take, it takes investing early and a reasonable amount, and if you continue, imagine, that's just from that one investment, $15,000, and you get $2 million. Now, by the way, whichever calculator you use, it depends, if you want to check this out with a future value calculator online, um, I went through, if I compounded it annually, then I came up with... Um, not quite 2 million, 1.6. When I compounded it monthly, it was real close to 2 million. When I compounded it um, 
uh, semi-annually was real close to 2 million, monthly was over 2 million, so it depends how often it's compounded. These are approximations, but your eyes need to be wide open to the need. What? Well, yeah, this is all well and good, but where am I going to get that? That $15,000. Well, suppose Uncle Boris dies and leaves you $20,000. You're 17 years old, or let's say it's 18, so it's technically your money and not in guardianship, but whatever. What are you going to do with $20,000? Hey, vroom, 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 vroom. Vroom, vroom. I'm going to go out and get a new car. Now, is there anything wrong with a car? No. Remember, that was uh, 15000 Hey, you got $5,000. Of course, you tithe on that. That would still give you $3,000 to go out and buy a, a decent car to get around in for a few years. And that 15000 that you put away in a retirement fund sets you up for life. That's the power of compound interest and time. Compound interest, time, and getting a good interest rate. We haven't talked about that. That will come. And as I mentioned in the last lesson, you have to understand that this is all assuming that it's going to stay your money. And the way things are going politically in the world, uh, Mr. Fariseo was mentioning to me in, was it Canada, where if you didn't do certain things, what was the specific that they didn't do or didn't say that they froze your money or access right, the money? Right, the, uh, the truckers that, that uh, peacefully protested in, I believe, Ottawa, they... Uh, they froze all their assets, all their bank accounts, everything. They couldn't touch mm -hmm. any money at all. So you have to be aware, as I mentioned in the last lesson, you know, politics is involved in money. If you haven't figured that out, um, you need to, as the ostrich says, get your head out of the sand. And I'm not saying one party is and one party isn't. But the point is, just because it's your money, you never can tell. And that's why the Lord tells us not to put our faith and our treasure in those riches. But on the same token, look at the power of what you can do with that finances. It gives you, so you're taken care of in your elderly years, and you don't have to be a burden on your family. And then you can leave that money to whatever, to family members that need it, to others that need it, to ministries that need it. And so it's not that we don't invest in money and we, you know, it's God or money. No, it isn't God or money. You're supposed to honor God with your money, not just the 10% you give to the church, the other 90%. And isn't it more honoring to build up this than vroom, vroom, vroom? I think you would say yes. And again, I said there's nothing wrong with a car. I have a vehicle, okay? Everybody needs one pretty much unless you live in a big city. And then you don't want to pay $800 a month to park the critter that you can't hardly use anyways because the traffic's horrible. But 99%, yeah, you need a car. But do you need to spend that money that you could be investing? So weigh and be a wise stewards with all of the money that God has given you.